Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I'm Amira Smith, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, Joshua Meekins, as always. What's going on, everybody? Um, like Amira said, welcome to another episode. Um, again, we start our episodes off with announcements, and we're going to keep it short today. Um, again, for those who don't know, we're shorting, shortening ooh, our episodes from an hour to 30 minutes, and we're breaking it up between 30-minute segments to put half of, it, half of it on Patreon and the other half open to our public. For those who don't know, our Patreon goes to supporting the um, podcast, all the content that we create at Mike J Films, and really helping us move forward. So, you know, we get a bunch of things that come with that. We're going to start including stickers and a monthly newsletter. So please check that out on the Patreon. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to growing that audience. And, you know, Disruptors in the Culture, the whole thing about our show is we really believe that everybody should get keys to the game, mm -hmm. right? You got to see it to be it. And so we bring people who basically have already opened doors that you can somewhat just walk into. So that's why you should be subscribing to our Patreon and giving us some money so you can get more <laughs> keys to the game. So, Josh, this was actually um, our guest today, Amber Weich. She is a fashion, I would guess an icon in the making. Mm -hmm. um, get ready to hear a lot more about her journey. Um, everywhere because she's building a brand that you know you guys should all chat tap into so josh i guess this is your connection so you should make the the big yeah intro today. yeah yeah so this is shout out my girlfriend shadir she definitely did the intro for me and amber yes. um amber is the ceo and founder of pray for fashion so we were both at a, a mutual friends listening party birthday shout out dapa actually you can shout him out front of the podcast um and you know while we were there my girlfriend and amber became friends and then she was like, well, you should talk to Josh. He does a podcast. And I was like, okay. You know, we kind of hit it off from there, started kind of learning more about Pray for Fashion, kind of always heard murmurs about the brand. So it was really cool to meet, you know, the, the originator. And that was, you know, fantastic to see. But from, you know, there I, we kind of dug and did our research on your journey, and we thought it would be amazing to have you. So, you know, first and foremost, thank you. Um, Thank you for having me, an icon in the making. Like, wow. <laughs> Listen, you Put know. Put the it, on your girl. Nah, but you know, it's like one of those things where people will be like, I knew them when. Or mm -hmm. they'll remember, right. you know. So that's why it's important for people to, you know, to document your journey through all your steps, right? right. Through the whole process. Because next thing you know, when you're big, big, mm -hmm. everybody will be, you know, having to pay that big guap, go to the flagship <laughs> store. <laughs> you know, really go to the flagship yeah. store. And then it will just be, they can come back to like, oh, this will be an old interview. That, right. You know, at that point, and then they'll be able to see, like, wow, this was her process. True. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, pray for fashion. Did you always know that you wanted to be in fashion? Like, when did, or was there a transition when you thought to yourself, like, I, I, I think I want to do this? I absolutely knew that I wanted to do something in fashion, um, be, just because that's what I'm into. Like, I would just put rip the curtains down and drape them on me some way somehow I started did, I did fashion shows at, in school started a fashion club however I didn't think of owning my own brand I know like you know having a business is kind of the norm now but uh back in my day not to put my age out there but like you didn't know people that looked like you that had a, that owned their own business so it just wasn't I didn't think it was within reach for me. Um, so I went to school. I moved to L.A. two weeks after my high school graduation. So I was 17 years old. Wow. First time there was me moving there on a buddy pass. I didn't have a return flight, anything. Wow. So literally stepping out on faith. <laughs> um, so I went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, where I majored in merchandise marketing with intentions to be a buyer. I wanted to just work for a big luxury brand for like uh, like Neiman Marcus or something. I just wanted to be invited to fashion shows and get free clothes, period. Um, but at my time at FITM, you know, I took a business class and, you know, started learning the tools to run my own business and Pray for Fashion was born. <laughs> wow. Wait, straight out of college. Like, so you graduated, or did you say after high school? After high school, yeah. What high school did you go to? Prep Charter in South Philly. Wow. That's crazy. Like, did you know someone in L.A. and you were like, I'm going to sleep no. on the couch? Wow. No. Um, so the FITM came to the, the the college, the convention center when they have those uh, the college, college fairs. College, fair. college yeah. fairs. And um, their booth was just, I mean, it's a fashion school, so their booth was just, it was just so pretty. I mean, they had tool. I mean, tool and just like all the fancy pretty things. And I'm just like, I'm going to go over here. All, all my friends going to Penn State and Millersville and all that. I'm like, I'm going to check out this booth. And, you know, I went home. I told my mom, like, I really want to go here. And she was like, 
how how are you you know about to afford an LA lifestyle and I'm just like I don't know but this is where I want to go and um I mean God wow, so they had like doors. dorms and everything um so they basically had like a we, there wasn't really a campus campus it was kind of like um they had a some type of partnership with apartment buildings where it was student housing but we, so we paid through the school but we lived in an apartment like with you know in downtown LA yeah so after you did fit them so you, you completed your um coursework and everything mm -hmm. And then what did you do after that? Like, we were working in fashion? Uh, yes, I was a wardrobe stylist. Um, very random. First of all, everything happens for a reason. Like, mm -hmm. the way I meet people, it's just like, I mean, even with Shadera, we were just trying to figure out who's going to be the first one to go get some food <laughs> because everybody <laughs> was so cute. So I was like, and then this that turned into me being here. So um, in L.A., a friend of mine uh, kind of just made the connection with me and the stylist out there. And, and one time, one day, she needed an intern. Her assistant was just not, you know, didn't show up. Made myself available, and from there, I, you know, became her assistant, and I was styling for Mary Mary, Christina Milian, uh, we did Nisi Nash, Layla Ali, uh, just, just to name a few. But yeah, I, I did that for a, a lot of years. I don't, I don't know exactly. Um, and then from there, I just, you know, I worked retail. I tried, I've tried corporate, but um, overall. I always stuck with Pray for Fashion. Wow. So how long were you in L.A.? Like years, Eight I guess. Eight years, I want to say. Eight years. Yeah. I just recently left L.A. Um, long story short, I just wanted to give Atlanta a try because it was the black Hollywood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, everything is just not for everybody. Um, yeah. Honestly, I just I didn't love it there. I, I didn't. My career wasn't prospering like I wanted it to. So. I left Atlanta. I came back here, um, and I actually started investing in some real estate here. So that's why I'm I'm still here. I'm definitely planning to go back to LA because I love it there. Like that's home for me. Well, Philly is home, but yeah, that's where I enjoy living. When you went to LA, was that to like work on set, like set um, styling or wardrobe and movies and stuff like that? Yeah. So we we did a uh, video. That's where a lot of like the video shoots happen, like the BET Awards. All all of the major award shows happen there. Uh, press conferences, um, TV. Uh, reality TV, sitcoms, uh, a lot of that stuff is filmed there, obviously. Yeah. Um, so the, the biggest places in New York and L.A. for styling. So I was like, I, I got to be in L.A. I, I don't like the cold either, so that yeah. was, the weather was just a plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the couple weeks we had, everybody made me move up to L.A. Yeah, so for sure, yeah. for sure. <laughs> wow, so what was the motivation to transition into, like, you want to make your own brand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the motivation was... Um, not to dampen the mood here, but it's kind of a sad story. So when I was in high school, um, my high school sweetheart, his name was Akira Frazier, he ended up passing away playing basketball mm -hmm. from an enlarged heart. But before he passed away, um, when I, he was a year uh, younger than me. So when I moved to L.A. and I was in school, you know how when you, you're talking to your little boo, y'all got your future life planned out. So he's like, I'm going to go to the NBA and you're going to have your own fashion brand and I'm just like boy anybody want you know I'm gonna be a buyer for Neiman Marcus and he's like no you're gonna have your own store I'm gonna you know pay for it blah 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 so every day in school like after class he would ask me like so what did you learn today to put towards your your own brand and I'm just like so we basically like made my business plan or oh, cupcaking on the phone but I'm really building out a business plan so once he passed away you know that motivation like oh I gotta do it I gotta live up to what he thought I could do and you know that turned into him playing to next seed turned into me just really going for it and like you know I gotta prove him right like I, I can do this yeah absolutely yeah how, how was the name came to, how did the name pray for fashion um honestly out? it came to me in a dream <laughs> I the, the I I was trying and trying and trying to think of a name for weeks at it's like weeks and then pray for fashion like came to me in a dream and it was perfect because for me it kind of captions like the most important things in my life pray I'm a, I'm a faith-based person I'm a child of God so like prayer foundation of everything the number four is the number that um he played when he wore when he played basketball wow. and then fashion obviously so kind of yeah. just went together know. wow that's, that's beautiful that is Thank you. yeah Wow. So, um, all right. Would you consider Pray for Fashion a streetwear brand or like, well, I guess because it's kind of like that distinction. Like I know there's sometimes there's like the athleisure brand or like a leisure brand and then streetwear. 
Um, how would you categorize? I would definitely brand? say I'm a streetwear brand. I think athleisure is more of the style of the clothes. So I do sell athleisure, but the streetwear is kind of the genre. Like, that's the lifestyle of it. So I, I would say I'm a streetwear brand. Uh, professional streetwear brand. Ah, uh, perfect. Okay. Um, what makes it different from other streetwear brands? Pray for Fashion is different because I'm not just slapping a logo on a t-shirt. I mean, we, I stand for, it's a motivational streetwear brand. So, like, everything I do is to empower and to uplift from, you know, my products to my marketing to the events that I have. I'm always just trying to motivate my peers, motivate the youth, motivate, you know, anybody that looks like me to say, like, if I can do it, you can, you know. It sounds cliche, but if I can do it, you can too. So I, I was perusing some of the Instagram and some of the stuff you designed, and uh, obviously it's all really dope. Where does the, the creative process start for you when you create a piece? Where does it start? Um, I don't really have, like, a set creative process. Yeah. Um, like, when an idea comes to me and it doesn't leave, like, you know, I have a, a lot of ideas, some that just never make it to be made. Mm -hmm. But um, when I have an idea and it's just, like, I can't get this out of my head. I just I just have to bring it to life. But, like, you know, I, I don't really have a process. It just, it just comes of, to me. Yeah. Is there anything <laughs> that kind of, like, draws inspiration for you? Like, would you, like, like, I always say all the time, like, I do my best work when I'm in motion. So, like, if I'm on the train, I write really well. If I'm in a plane, I write really well. Like, is there, is there any space that kind of is conducive for inspiration for you? When I'm traveling, like, you know, yeah, like, if I'm out of the country or, or even if I'm in L.A. or New York for a weekend, like, definitely just being in other places, fast-paced, just seeing other cultures and cities that kind of inspires me. What, um, I guess fashion inspiration. Like, um, what are your, who's your, like, biggest fashion inspirations? Even if it's a designer or a label or I'm ones a, that you kind of like, yeah, they, even if it's like, like, this season of this was, whoa. Um, off the, like, brand-wise, off the top of my head, Jerry Lorenzo is my guy. I think, I just feel like we stand for a lot of the same things, mm -hmm. um, he, you know, one thing he said that I kind of can resonate with, he was like, I'm not a designer, I'm a storyteller. I'm, I'm, j I'm just here to send a message. Like, you know, so I don't really get into, you know, the intricate details of trying to have a full gown or, you know, like ready to wear. But I use my platform through fashion to tell a story, to, to, to you know, uh, put a message out there. So Jerry, Jerry's my guy. Um, uh, obviously, Virgil, I mean, he just broke barriers within the fashion industry with four streetwear brands um, that I have to mention him. Yeah. So those two. Definitely. Wow. Yeah, streetwear is, is Virgil and like Jerry, their influence is, I've just never seen nothing like it where the rest of the fashion industry has bent to their will. You right. Know what I mean, to exactly. like items that we see. I mean, of course, because he was creative director of Louis, but it's items that we're seeing them make that you're like, we never saw them make that before. Right. You know, the hats and Louis skateboards. Right. You know what right. I mean? Like, it's just. And now you see everyone else like trying to follow suit. Yeah. <laughs> like, so he, he definitely broke barriers for us. Definitely. And it's one of those things like we talk about, it becomes like a staple for our culture. I feel like even like in black culture, like there was always streetwear. And people have found ways to then, like, you know, make that represent something so something so, so much bigger mm -hmm. than, yeah. you know, what than, than what it originally was. But, like, to see, I guess to see other cultures kind of really just kind of grab onto that. Right. It's like, oh, this is this is popping. You know what I'm saying? Right. But yeah. us still be the forefront of that voice yeah. is kind of well, major. What they used to call it, ghetto until proven fashionable. Yeah. Certain oh, things, yeah. like whether it's right. nails, the you know what I mean? It's a lot of the jewelry, the braids. I the, mean, we create all the trends. Yeah, <laughs> so no, definitely. It's like, and and it's a lot of other countries, we... they give it up. They'll let it be known. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. They're like, shit, I remember even being in college, and this one guy, he was the most waspy guy ever. Like, had a lot of money, too. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I, <laughs> and I didn't get it at that point. He was, like, blonde, lots of money. And then they, they talked about how he had, um they helicoptered him over. He was a Manhattan kid. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want him late after holiday. So mm -hmm. his family helicoptered him to campus because I went to school on Staten Island. Okay. And I was like, okay. And I got older and was like, whoa. If <laughs> like, it was told getting me like, money. helicoptering somebody to campus, I'd have been like, like, excuse me. Like, the money was different. Campus had a helicopter yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm like, And I remember, it, like, in one of the parking lots that that's, was, like, not used crazy. next door or something. That's so crazy. But I remember him being like, you know who is the best dressed women in, like, all, like, actors, whoever. And, they, and he was like, Mary J. Blige. 
match. He was like, she's the best dressed, hands down. Mary always been fly, for always, sure. you always, you know, always. So it's it's like it's crazy to see high fashion really dial and dig deep into it, like all those mm-hmm. trends and everything. Even like the nail trends on the runway, we're like, mm-hmm. oh, now. Um, so. We talked about your like your main inspirations. Yeah. I was gonna say um, really quick too, like you, you since you travel, like you've been to L.A., Atlanta, obviously Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think is like? What do you what do you what cities do you think are kind of like paving the way so far in the fashion industry? Like where do you think we pull most of our uh, influences from? Would you say? Like does Philly have a solid piece and there's LA just running with the flag? Is New York? Just I'm gonna have to say down? New York. I think yeah. everything starts and finishes in New York. Um, okay. I mean LA is kind of late to to trends like. They are taken from New York, Philly. I love us, but we be copying. Like we're <laughs> we're a monkey see, monkey do city. Um, but I think I think a lot of the trends are born in, in Tokyo, really. But New yeah. York, if we're talking domestic. So when I, I went to Japan three years ago, went to Harajuku in Japan. Oh and wow! That, when I tell you the style and the fashion over I gotta there, get, I gotta get over there. I, I like mean, it. listen, it's it, if you can. We, I think we found a ticket. Me and my homies found a ticket for like three three fifty round trip. Three fifty round trip. What's the from, site you went from, on for that? I, I will let you know. <laughs> I don't know if it's legal or illegal, so I will not mention it on the, the cast here. But <laughs> we left from um, JFK. Flew out to Tokyo, 16-hour flight. When I tell you, it was the longest flight of my life. But when we got there, we were there for a week. It was beautiful. You Josh, know, the style of fashion is yeah, crazy. Yeah, Josh, sure. Josh has some sneakers that oh, I'd yeah. be like, ooh. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, I got these when I was in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, never seen them before. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, yo, that's yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. I could and they have it. everything. Like, stuff that you see limited release in the United States, they have, like, regular stuff. In the store, yeah. yeah. Walk up, cop your size, no walk line. up. It's just, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. there. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, it's this really illegal crazy. site, Josh. Listen, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna let y'all know. I do this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, like with your brand, how long? When when did you birth Pray for Fashion? 2014. Okay. So, oh, wow. it's, she's seven now. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? What are your like next hopes for the brand? Like, um, yeah, the next hopes. You know, like of where do. You, I guess how am I saying like where do you see it in the next or hope for it to be yeah. in the next three to five years? I mean, I definitely just want it to be more of a like sought out sought after brand. Um, I mean, the the streetwear culture is like doing random drops and having lines around the corner. So right. I would love to like just do like a a pop up tour and go to different cities, Chicago, New York, um, and have pop up shops and have lines around the corner and people just like really yeah. shopping my stuff. That's just a big. Uh, hope for me. So just just to build the the name, build the name, get brand recognition. Yeah. Hell yeah. I um. So we talked about your creative process. Like, yeah. what is the creative process? Like you said, like the name came to you in a dream. Does like do designs come like in a dream? And do you have like a release schedule? That's um. A good question, yeah. Okay. It's two parts. So I create what I want to wear, basically. So if I mm. feel like. The, Oh, I wish I had, you know, so I, I was a stylist first, so I know how to take a piece that already exists and take it to a tailor to add a zipper down or, like, you know, to add something to it because I feel like it's missing something. So that's, I feel like that's my creative gift. So if I feel as though, like, dang, I, I love the concept of a sweatsuit, but I feel like it's missing extended drawstrings, different colors. So um, I basically create something that I would want, like, that I want to wear. Um, as far as a calendar, I, I don't really drop on a set fashion calendar. Um, I just more so, like, I tr- you know, I try to cover every season. But I, I just learn my customers and, you know, when they shop most, when they shop less. Or if I just have something, I'm like, I, I got to get this out. I got to get this out. So I don't, I don't have, I don't follow the normal fashion calendar now. Let me ask a you lot what? of streetwear brands don't. Okay. They, it's, they follow the drop concept, like literally just drop whenever they want. Okay. Let me let me ask you this then. So like what role does social media play in like your business? So like I know one of the things like we were talking about earlier, like social media has now become a life of its own of how, you know, content creators or, or creatives in general kind of operate. So how is it kind of operating within the fashion industry? Like how is it being used as a tool and how how is how have you found it helpful in kind of your in your own brand? I mean, honestly, I feel like in today's world, social media is the lifeline of any entrepreneur like I, it's a free platform to where people can find out about my brand like i i take my hat off to people who's built brands before instagram came out because it's like how 
were y'all getting the word out there? Like, yeah. it literally, it was that mu- it was so much harder. But now it's just like, if you have good content and you're consistent and you have a clear voice and tone of, of the message you're trying to portray, social media could work for you. Like, it's literally, it's literally the lifeline of my, my marketing. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> like, Instagram, cut the check. Instagram, please cut the check. <laughs> no, like, you know, people are already there, like you're saying. Yeah. So you're just, you're just coming in as a commercial on right. the, wow. I mean, you do have to yeah. do it right. For like, sure. You know, for sure, have, you, got, got, uh, you have to do it right. But when done right, social media will work for you. Do you still utilize some of the connects as, like, when you were a stylist for Sometimes. your brand? Um. One thing I learned being in that world is they just, uh, like, celebrities don't really like being exploited. So it's like I, I always kept the two separate. Like, they know what I do. So if they, you know, some of some of my clients are like, hey, when, when you going to give me a T-shirt or whatever? So I'm like, oh, I actually have it in the car already. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> I don't like going into it with, because um, I don't want people to think when I'm styling them, all I'm, I'm going to just try to push my product onto them because that's two different, you know, sectors. Yeah, really that's not, they didn't hire me to put them in pray for fashion. Oh, I have so to respect you're still that. still styling? I do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of stepped back from it. Um, well, COVID happened, so a lot of yeah. uh, work just kind of stopped. But um, sometimes, okay. yeah. it's not my main. It's not my main gig anymore. <laughs> yeah. So but, even within that, so like I know we talk about all the time how like create like if if you're fully focused on on developing this brand, right? What do you do for yourself? Like when it's not fashion, what are you doing for yourself? Um, I'm big on family. Yeah. Uh, honestly. Just being around my family, just, you know, spending that time. Again, COVID, just, uh, I didn't realize that I needed that time until mm-hmm. I was forced to sit down. Now that we're kind of, the world is opening back up, I was like, all right, girl, you have to get back to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, so, I, But I am starting to find a balance now where it's like, all right, um, I know today is Sunday, but I usually don't do anything work-related on Sundays, like, at all. Like, that's family day or, or even, you know, hanging with friends or whatever. But I, I'm just trying to find... You know, as an entrepreneur, you don't clock in or, or out. So it's like I'm working, 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 working. Yeah. N- not on this day. So, yeah. But uh, for me, it's definitely just spending time with my family. So how do you find that balance? Because we t- we've talked before. Like we're always talking about even Daryl. Shout out Daryl, alumni of the podcast. Dropping names here. <laughs> but everybody has talked about like moving on to LA. You made the move before like it became popular. You know what I mean? How did you balance that kind of piece of like I'm about to leave my family at this age and develop a brand new lifestyle? Um, I mean. Just knowing that it's tough, and it just you gotta want it more than you know. Mm-hmm. It's always gonna be reasons. Oh, I shouldn't go because X Y Z, or I sh- shouldn't leave because my sister just had a baby, and it's oh, well, I want to be here for my nephew. But it's like you have to see the bigger picture. A lot of things that I've done in my twenties, I would not have been able to do had I not gone to LA. So mm-hmm. it's like, what, what do you want more? I mean, you know, I love y'all, <laughs> y'all my people. <laughs> But um, I'm gonna have to fly in on the holidays because this this is the life that I want to create for myself. So this is where I gotta go. Most definitely. Wow. So um, hmm. Who are some people that you would like to work with in the industry, whether fashion like or even product like who who yeah who in fashion and then maybe like outside of fashion but still in an industry that you might want to do like product placements or collabs with or. First things first, I want to be invited to design my own Jordan 1. I just <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're speaking hey, into existence. Y'all hey, heard hey, that, Jordan, right? Hey, um, Jordan. A stylist, a Lady May, she has yes. her own Jordan. And I'm just like, like Melody is it going to be my turn? Yeah, it's like, um, yes. Vashti has a Jordan, doesn't oh, she? I didn't, um, I, didn't see, I didn't see hers. You know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. I thought Vashti Cola was like one of the first women to get a Jordan. I, I, I could be wrong. Yeah. I, I haven't, um, I didn't know about that, but... Yeah. Jordan, I I just recently uh, partnered with Rex Philly and yeah. uh, and created my own Nike Cortez, and that was just like, all right, oh. I'm getting my foot in the door, and Jordan, my Jordan one is coming next. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that I would love to. I don't know if I want to. I mean, I don't need to style her; she's amazing. But Tiana Taylor, if I could mm. work collab with her or somehow, or um, yeah. So Tiana and Jordan. Yes, okay. those good. Those are two. <laughs> How was designing the uh, the Cortez for Rec Philly? Because I, I know that um, Amazing. it was fun. What was, was that process so f- like? I, it was literally like we were able to just like take the entire sneaker apart, take the tongue Word. off, take the swoosh off. Like we literally took the whole sneaker apart and then just recreated it however we wanted to. And oh. it was just like 
I don't know. I, I, I'm just still kind of like when I think about it, I, I, I'm on cloud nine because it's like I just never knew the process that went into creating it, like the, all the different parts of a sneaker. Yeah. And it was like, it was so fun. It was it was amazing. It definitely like like had me inspired. Like oh, I can't wait to. It. Are we putting those on the website? Is that going up? Um, uh, Nike, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Nike not trying to let us do that. But uh, so right now, I just designed a one of one. Absolutely. But um, you know, when I when I get in that room with Nike, we gonna work something out and yeah. we gonna uh, mass produce a shoe. We're all about that positive talk. So like, I, definitely yes, affirmation is going to happen. It. It's going to happen. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Like, it, even in the same sense, like, do you see yourself kind of working in any other industries with fashion? Because we've talked before about even doing like like clothing in, in old head and the, the pieces mm-hmm. that we're doing. Like, do you see yourself doing doing fashion in film and clothing in film or, yeah. or styling in film? I, I would definitely. I I would love to style in film, yeah. Um, but having a product placement and and especially like a you know urban film, I would definitely be. That was some, something I would want to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, you never know, you know. Um, it, it, it's like I follow this other joint. It's all about like clothes and sex in the city. They like old stuff. But even the How next season. How do you feel about the new? You know, I ain't gonna lie. I like it. I like it. Um, the it's, fashion it's is some... not there for me. It's giving. I'm just putting all the pieces that I have in my closet one at one time, and it's like I feel like they're trying to work. I, I miss Carrie's Pat, trying to. It is funny because like they talk a lot with Pat Field. I hear that like the new stylist do. Mm-hmm. But um, I miss Pat's touch, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just not, I don't know. It yeah. just seems forced she, now. And she's so bohemian now. Yeah. Like you said, where it's like mm. all her clothes at once. It's mm-hmm. like, I like the story, but the fashion isn't, it's not and what it used to be where I used to shows. look and like, see. Yeah. Like, ooh, what's she having? Even her shoes don't excite me right now. And I'm like, like, like Carrie, is Carrie the without the perfect shoes, it just hasn't been doing it for she me. She had one when she was wearing that Norma Kamali dress, that like asymmetrical with the white blazer when she was going okay, on a yeah, date. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, gave yeah. me old like that. Carrie. That I was like, like that. okay, okay, she. I see a glimpse. But <laughs> right? everything else is like. She's trying to peek through. Girl, like what is but, she doing? Yeah. But yeah. Missing the market. Did you see the whole season? I did. That that orange dress, which is, I think it was Valentino. Uh, on a, yeah. When she was. Uh, I But I saw a post and it just, it. I can't unsee it. They was like, oh, so she went dressed as a croissant and the whole top of the I'm dress looks like a tolerant. croissant. I and I was like, po- oh, I can't unsee it. <laughs> when I was watching, I'm just like, who does, like, why would y'all do this? Yeah. Mm. And the purse and was so literal. Yeah. It was like, uh, we digress though. But <laughs> like, imagine, you know, having a couple pieces and that, and that would be, yeah. that would be that amazing. Would be because you. you know they they talk about every piece everybody wears and that right. that would be like that would be a dream I think for your brand or even a gossip girl I don't know you know mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you guys, gossip girl the new gossip girl I haven't watched the it. pieces in the new gossip girl or because it's like they it's it's in you know it's today so yeah. it's like they're definitely um, streetwear looks but like they all got money so it's like high end streetwear looks and I'm like. Okay, if I could get some great fashion <laughs> pieces, who I got to call to be a yeah. um, gossip girl? Yes. But, I mean, matter of fact, I'm going to go look up who their stylist is. Hey, sis. Yes. <laughs> that would be live. I wonder if somebody has, like, a blog where they break down all their looks, like, all the time. Because mm. that's, that's that would be. yeah, that would be a, a dope one because you know you would get the press. Right. Um. So... Clearly, you know, you, you fit right in around here. We talkers, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and so we start talking about in Just Like That and Sex of the City. And we like, what? Hold up. <laughs> what? Um, so you have a podcast of your own. Yes. Just another motivational podcast. Yes, ma'am. What, what made you start it? Again, just wanting to motivate and encourage uh, youth and, you know, entrepreneurs who are afraid to start that, you know, just like you guys are doing. Everybody's story is different. However... When we're transparent as entrepreneurs about our journeys and our failures and and our successes, that makes the next person say, "Okay, well, if they did it, you know, I can I can do it." Or you know, like, "Oh, it might, you know, you might even hear a gem in one of these podcasts where a problem that you couldn't figure out how to solve, somebody else went through it too." Yeah. So being transparent, a, a transparent as an entrepreneur for other people to you know hear your struggles, I just feel like it's just so helpful to our community especially. Yeah. Like I said, like growing up, for me, I didn't see anybody that looked like me where I was from that had their own business. So now I want people to see that. 
And it's, it's crazy that you, you mentioned, I think one of the through lines have uh, through every episode has been like exposure. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, especially in our communities and the places that we go, we don't get to see people working in cinematography, fashion, design, or even even any parts of that. You right. know, we're, we're kind of, it's always been like the doctor or sports. Like, that's been our only exactly. outlet. Yeah. So, like, being able to have these discussions and talk about, you know, this is actually how I got into it. I, I took a leap of faith, went to L.A. and just, and just tried it. Because mm-hmm. even when, when we had Dom on the show, and she was talking about, like, no, she went to a school of fashion in New York, but no one was really doing technical design, you know what yeah. I'm saying, for fashion. So she had to learn how to do all that, and it was, right. like, her by herself on that path. Right. So, I mean, a lot of times we, we, we travel those th- places solo, but, you know, we come together as disruptors. So I did that, that little plug right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice segue. We mm-hmm. have a whole community piece there. So I, know I, really, I really think that's important, you know, and, and you, it's definitely like pat yourself on the back, give yourself your big ups because a lot of times we look back on ourselves and we go, like, you know, it's tough. You know, a lot, yeah, we're oh, doing yeah. it by ourselves. Oh, yeah. You ain't got nobody to talk to. Your friends is like, well, I'm just doing my regular job. And you're like, nah, like I want to put Talking my passion out there. Yeah, yeah. Talk about it. So. I, that's 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 gospel because I used to be in a friend group where I was kind of the only creative person and on like a creative like path mm-hmm. and that can it doesn't discourage you but you don't have someone that y'all could be like oh this sucks <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean at the same time or like it sucked until I finished and now it's beautiful right. you know because I think right. we all have that where we're like this is stupid why am I doing this right. and then at the end we're like oh how would you ever doubt me I'm a genius mm-hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's the best feeling like I, I told you so yeah mm-hmm. whole time we yeah. be we the only ones out on ourselves like mm-hmm. I'm scared wait right. this ain't even it how I know <laughs> um wow so what is it I lost my thought it was a thought my in bad, there no no I, I lost it myself you yeah. hit on a really good point and um wow it'll come back to me sheesh yeah so, <laughs> so right now, like I, I, I think that's just I think it's really important. So what, I, I, just more things about I think you in this sense, like what is like for so people can understand like what's what how do you define? I, I asked you this earlier actually, and so hopefully you had time to think about it. What would you say is a a, a movie or an album that this that describes your stage of life at this moment? Okay. Um, I know everybody hates Kanye right now, but I'm going to have to go graduation because um, okay. I just feel like I put the work in. That album has what? Like, champion on it, stronger, can't tell me nothing. Like, mm-hmm. not saying I'm where I want, like, you know, where I want to be. Yeah. However, give me my flowers. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm definitely feeling like I, I've, I've college dropout, late registration. Now it's time for me to graduate. Like, you know, I'm, I'm on a uphill Trajectory. trajectory. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going for. I got you. I got you. I mean, that's that's a solid one too. And I think, yeah. I think everybody loves graduation, Kanye. Let's just make sure. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I mean, I honest musically, I like all Kanye. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's why I I really try to ignore his antics when he's going through what he's going through because as an artist, yeah, that man is a yeah. genius. As an artist, he is extremely forward thinking. Yeah, you know what I mean. Even when you look at how things age well. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they, whether he was off his meds or not, when he said, you ain't got the answer, Sway. <laughs> right. Because it is, and I know that probably, you probably were like standing up clapping yes. as a fashion person mm-hmm. when he said, well, why don't you just build it yourself? And you're like, he's doing it. But yeah. did you not understand that, like anything else, it's an industry and there are gates and there are gatekeepers exactly. mm-hmm. and then there's I, I, manufacturing plants and you know, building this stuff and this, you're literally using raw materials to create. So you're like, it's that's not, product, you're like, this yeah. ain't, this ain't that. Yeah. Like, it ain't, it's easy and it's interesting. When As people, the consumer may think, it's like, you you literally don't have the answer. So yeah, like. Yeah, <laughs> but it's always someone who's, someone else is doing it and someone's just watching and they think, well, did you ever think of, and the person's like, no, <laughs> I, never did, I never thought of that. I'm just here trying to problem solve every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, wow. But um, so what does it mean to you to be a disruptor? Um, To go against the grain. I mean, like to show girls like, hey, you don't got to be a rapper. It's baby mom to be popping. Uh, you can love God and still be cool. You can be a female and still be successful in the male-dominated industry, like the streetwear industry. Mm-hmm. To, you know, basically just break down barriers. Mm-hmm. You can stick to who you are. Mm-hmm. Authenticity will make way for you. That is the quote that I live by. Like, Ooh. be you. 
be you. I mean, social media, while it has done a lot of good, it's also, it does a lot of bad. Yeah. And people feel like they have to mimic what they see on these, you know, these devices. And it's like, no, no. Literally, you are your brand. You are what makes you different from everybody else that's selling sweatsuits. So, mm-hmm. like, just be authentic. Be authentic. I got one question before we hop into some fun stuff, but really quick. Do you have any staple pieces, like, that you've made or just, like, in life that you are, like, I have to have this near me or on me or that is, like, your thing, like, your go-to? I'm, like, really into blazers. I, like... You get, you throw a blazer on almost anything, yeah. and it's like, oh man, what's the look? So mm-hmm. I think that's that's my staple, a good okay. blazer. A good blazer. A good blazer. That's solid. Yeah. Blazers can have so many different fits. Yeah, yes. they can drape, I, they I, can, I, uh, I wasn't expecting that answer. I'm kind of <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> that's kind of fire. Because I, I feel like people would say like a hat or like a, or something like that. Yeah. Like I, was, I was not expecting blazer. That's fire. That's really yeah. fire. My name is Amber White, CEO and founder of Pray for Fashion, and you are now tapped in with Disruptors in the Culture.